Hi, what's going on everyone? It's Yami coming back to you with an update for my week working for GoPuff. It was a great week. I learned a lot about GoPuff and I'm excited to share with you what I've learned today. I'll be going through my finances and how that worked out for the week and averaging out everything so you see what I make per hour. On top of that, I'll be going over the pros and cons of working for GoPuff, my overall thoughts, and if I think you should do it. But really quickly, if you can click the like button for the YouTube algorithm if you want to see more content like this, and I'll be updating more videos on not just GoPuff driving, but other side hustles and money saving strategies. So I really appreciate it. Please subscribe if you haven't, and let's get to it. Real quick, I just wanted to say that this is not an advertisement for GoPuff. They are not paying me to say any of this. This is entirely my opinion and my perspective and my experiences. So I filmed a recap every single day I worked. So let's look at that real quick and then we'll come together for the summary. All right, so today's Friday. I had a four and a half hour shift. It was in the middle of the day and I had 11 deliveries. I made $38.50 from those commissions, and that's again the, from the $3.50 per delivery. For tips, I made $29 in the app, but someone gave me $9 cash in person, so in total, I got $38 in tips. So in total, I got $76.50, which comes out to $17 exactly per hour. However, I also kicked in the next weekly rewards tier, so I got another $20 on top of everything. With that included, it comes out to right around $21.44 per hour on average. For gas, I drove 63 miles in total, and so so if you remember from the last video, that is around $6 in gas. So in total, I made around $20.11 per hour. Not bad. Okay, quick update for Saturday shift. It was a five hour shift. I had 11 deliveries as well. So that means I got $38.50 from commission. And for tips, I got $30.15. So in total, I got $68.65 for today's shift. That comes out to $13.73 per hour, which is definitely a decline from the first shift and the second shift. Uh, but this one was during the day, and I think that had a lot to do with it. I think more orders come in at night. Tomorrow's shift is at night, so we'll see if that changes anything. I'm also two deliveries away from the final tier of the weekly rewards, so that means I'm getting another $30 on top of everything. I also had the same mileage I drove yesterday, and so that's around $6 for gas. And so that brings my hourly actually down to twelve fifty three an hour. So the thing was today was there was just a ton of drivers just sitting around. Like there's probably 10 of us just not doing anything, just waiting for the next order. And so I think that had a lot to do with it. Usually I'd be doing two to three orders every time I leave the warehouse. But this time it was one order every time just to keep everyone somewhat busy. It goes to show you have to pick your shifts accordingly because it seems like nights are just by far better for order quantity. Uh, rather than during the day where not many people are ordering, probably because they're working or whatever it is, uh, but hopefully tomorrow will be a lot better. All right, so for my last shift of the week, I had a five-hour shift. I had 22 deliveries, so that means my commission totaled out to $77. My tips came out to $60.49, and so the total is $137.49. This averages out to right around $27.50 per hour. I also unlocked the last weekly rewards tier, so I got an extra $30 on top of that. This shift was really busy. I drove in total 100 miles today, so that's quite a bit more than the last few shifts that I've done. So today I probably spent $10 in gas, so that comes out to $25.50 adjusted per hour. Today was an amazing shift. I had always two to three orders in my car at any given time. It seems that night shifts are much more busy than afternoon shifts. So that's for Sunday. Let's see how I did on average for the full week. So for the week, I worked in total 20.43 hours and did 60 deliveries. So everything included, I kicked in that weekly subsidy, so I got an extra $31 on top of that, and the weekly reward system, so an extra $120. I got in total $530.64. This comes out to $25.97 per hour on average. So I only worked about 20 hours per week, so if I did that all month, my take home would be well over $2,000. This is more than enough for me to cover my expenses, so for me, this is actually kind of a dream gig. So that total is really nice, but it definitely didn't come to me without a few lessons learned. So at least in my market, which is in Arizona, the deliveries slowed down heavily during the mid-afternoon. So I would have only one bag every 30 minutes or so, which was nothing compared to my busy nights that I was working where I had two to three bags every single time. By far the best time to drive in my market was 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. That was the golden time. Sadly though, these shifts are the first to go when the schedule gets created, and so you kind of have to be on top of the schedule to get the perfect shifts for you. If you were to only do mornings or mid-afternoons, I honestly don't know if that would be enough deliveries for you to make this a lucrative choice. But overall, it is really good money if you can snag two to three deliveries from the warehouse every single time you leave, because then that's an easy way to rack up the commission and tips. Having to go back and forth with just one delivery not only slows down your time per delivery, but it also wastes a ton of gas. 
But again, I was only driving at most maybe five miles was the farthest trip I had per day. Other than that, everything else is really close by and really easy to get to. Also, I learned that staying on top of communication, so their Slack channel is key. People will give out their shifts on there and say it on Slack first, so you have to be on top of that to snag the shifts that you want during the week. Also, it's really important to bring either a good audiobook or podcast or album to listen to because the shift gets really monotonous in the middle of it when you're four hours in and you're just driving everywhere. And be sure to bring a snack because you're going to need that. Uh, you get a little hungry when not much is going on. <laughs> and lastly, you're going to want to hit the like button to get more advice for GoPuff driving, but also to learn about other side hustles. So for the pros, I covered this a little bit in the last video, but I think it's important to reiterate the points because I think they're still very valid. First and foremost, the job is super simple. Again, I didn't record uh, actually doing the delivery itself, but all you have to do is take the bag from the warehouse in your car, go to the customer's house, put it on their doorstep, take a picture, swipe on your phone, go back to the warehouse. That's the entire job. It gets a little complicated with alcohol. Uh, you have to scan their ID front and back and then the rest is exactly the same. On top of that, this really depends on your local market as most of these points do, so take it with a grain of salt. But on top of that, you do make a decent amount of money doing this. Again, for my market, it was 350 per delivery and you keep 100% of the tips. That alone got me over $20 an hour on average. Other than that, I have to shout out my community again. These drivers are amazing. Everyone helped out each other. There was people that had like a flat tire and everyone would help them out. Or if there was a delivery issue, someone would help them out with that. Again, the community was solid and you had a very good foundation for support. One more thing is there's no boss micromanaging you during your day to day. So truly the day is yours to make it what you want. But of course, you would want as many deliveries as possible. So driving in the most efficient manner is what's needed. Another great thing is that you pick your schedule. That's really good for me because there's days where I just don't wanna work and so I can drop the shift or there's days where I'm not working already and I want to work so I can pick up a shift if someone drops it. Super helpful. Lastly, I'll say the sign-up process is the easiest sign-up process I've ever had for a delivery service. All you have to do is go online, provide a driver's license front and back and your proof of insurance for your car. And that's it. I had a background check and within an hour I was up and ready to drive for GoPuff. This is really good for people who haven't signed up already for GoPuff. I mean, you can do it and then just keep it as a side hustle for when you want it. There's no minimum hours to work, so you can just stay on it. I think if you wait too long, you might get deactivated, but I think as long as you work maybe a shift a week or a shift every other week, you'll probably be fine. All right, now for some cons. So first and foremost, I have to get this out of the way. GoPuff is getting a lot of negative attention in the press right now. There's apparently pay cuts in some markets. Apparently they're not treating their drivers so great in others and that is all probably true in their respective markets however in my market i am not feeling that whatsoever all i'm feeling is respect and community that's at least me but again it kind of depends on the market so i'd say that's kind of the biggest con right there is that this job is heavily dependent on where you're at so check your location see what the gopuff drivers in your market are saying and if it's all good things then go for it if it's all bad things and there's some growing pains with the company uh, wait a little bit make sure it's what you want to do and then make your decision then other than that though, uh, not many big complaints. One big one I had was the gas being used. Uh, I covered it in my recaps that you saw on how much I'm paying for gas. However, it does cost a lot of money uh, over the long run, but not only that, you know, you have to factor in oil changes, battery replacement parts, all of that. So make sure you do factor that into your decision. I've also been hearing some people not getting paid exactly what they were reporting on the app. So what they were told to do is ask HR for a change in the paycheck. But from what I'm learning is that it's not so easy and can sometimes take a couple weeks. That has yet to happen to me, so I'll keep you updated on that if that does, but at least in my market, that is not happening that much. Unfortunately, that's just kind of the nature of the job. It's a very young company, and so you're gonna have to deal with some growing pains. So another con is the scheduling. It's great to make your own schedule. However, if you're not on top of the schedule, you get really bad shifts, and that definitely impacts your paycheck at the end of the week. So stay on top of it, find out when your local market posts those schedules, and be there the moment it comes online. One other con I'm hearing is the taxes portion of everything. So they treat you as an independent contractor and that might be dependent on some markets, but at least in my market, you're a 1099. And so with that, you kind of have to do your own taxes and uh, write off everything. The positive of that though, is I believe you can write off your miles. I'm not a tax expert, so I think that's correct. But if you can, that is a huge write off at the end of the year. 
Okay, now for my overall thoughts on the company. So GoPuff is a very young company, fast moving, and it has exponential growth. I think as a company, it's gonna keep moving to bigger and bigger things. But for now, for us drivers, I think it's still a very solid go-to for side hustle. And let me be clear on that. Do I think you can make this as a main source of income? You could if you got really lucky with the schedule every week and the market was just booming all year round. The nature is that that might not always be true. And so I'd say this is more of a side hustle than it is a main source of income. But short of being a drug mule, I think this is honestly the most lucrative and simple delivery service anyone could ever do. I'm going to keep my ears open to any bad press they're getting or any lawsuits that are against the company. But for now, to me, they're in good standing and I'm going to keep driving for them. I will continue driving for GoPuff for at least a month and give you guys an update to see if it's still worth your time. I think GoPuff is honestly a super convenient service to have. Most of the time I was just getting snack foods or like Kleenex for customers and I think that's super convenient not to leave your house and just have it delivered straight to your door. Maybe that's lazy of me but I think the world is just moving to a delivery focused market. I got asked if someone could finance a vehicle and then just use GoPuff to pay off that vehicle and their monthly expenses. I think it's possible you'd have to check on your local market to see if it's booming but if it's anything like mine I honestly think you can absolutely do that as long as the cost is under let's say $300 a month. I see no problem with that and you could probably cover your monthly expenses on top of that. That's with the caveat that you work at least 30 hours a week. So that's really all I have to say about driving for GoPuff. I think it's still a go for anyone that has a booming market. And honestly, give it a shot if you're looking for a side hustle. It's really fun and easy to do. And with that, remember to subscribe to catch that monthly update. But in the meantime, I'll be posting videos on money saving strategies and other ways to make money. The whole point of this is to show you that you can live your life on your own schedule, not nailed down to a nine to five. All it takes is a little bit of creativity, some energy and some time. On top of that, a little bit of discipline to make sure you're not spending money where you don't need to. So please remember, stay frugal.